Hello everyone, my name is Aditya and today we will be talking about how to invoke EPS concurrent programs from OIC. Now I know this is a fairly simple topic but there is a little bit of confusion when I talk to some customers. Um, so you already know that there is an EPS adapter that's been there for, for years now um, which exposes uh, PL SQL Java concurrent programs and open interface tables uh, as APIs which you can call from your integration flow. Um, it also supports outbound so if you want to trigger an integration based on an event in EBS you can do that as well um, and then you know different uh, modes of connectivity uh, if there is a public API available you can directly go and access it if not you would use the agent to access the APIs. Um, but um, when you read the documentation, it says, you know, it exposes all of these different APIs, uh, but only those that are available as REST services for invocation, right? The confusion here is some customers think that when you create the adapter, uh, you see a list of concurrent programs and you can directly run those programs as you would run them from the UI, uh, but that's not the case. Uh, the adapter only shows you the list of concurrent programs which have REST interfaces, right? Um, and for that, you would actually, you know, of course, there's certain prerequisites, but um, uh, you would have to get the ISG deployed, uh, which is the inter integrated SOA gateway. Um, you would need the, you know, either the agent or, um, you know, some sort of network connectivity access from OIC to your EBS instance. Um, and then you need to deploy the required REST services, right? So you would go into ISG, search for concurrent programs, and if you find the one that you're trying to run, um, you would deploy that REST API, and then you would grant the user. So when you create a connection within OIC, um, you need to give it a username and password, um, and that user, could be usually a service account, uh, would need grants on the APIs so that um, that user can invoke it. So let's take a quick look at what I was mentioning earlier. So I'm logged into my EBS instance. I'll navigate to my integration repository. And here is where I can do a search. And in the search, I'll change the interface type to concurrent program. Um, and when I click go, this will give me a list of all the concurrent programs that are registered as REST interfaces within the ISG. They all might not be deployed, so you can go through the list and see if there is a registered uh, REST interface for the concurrent program that you're trying to call. So you can go through the list um, and let's just open one. I'll show you what it looks like. So here you'll be able to see the internal name and this is what you can use to search uh, in the concurrent program screen. Um, but um, here under the concurrent program, you'll see REST Web Services. Um, and within this, there will be a function called process. Now, all of these concurrent programs will have the same process function. Um, but when you click on view VATL, uh, you'll be able to see the REST endpoint, uh, which is generated specific to this. Um, and since I've deployed it with the alias item or assignment, um, in your case, this might be uh, undeployed you can go ahead and deploy it with some sort of service alias, um, and that's the service alias it assigns in the path of the REST API. Um, the next part of it is going to be consistent for all. Um, so when you append this to this path, you will get the full REST endpoint, um, and you'll be able to see the parameters required in this case, right? So here it's a post call, um, and then this input. So if I go to this, particular URL here, which is the type def, um, I'll be able to see the input parameters and also the output parameters, right? Um, and most of these are consistent, right? The application program, they'll be the same for pretty much all the concurrent programs. Um, but then, you know, some of these will be based on the arguments required by that concurrent program. Um, and the output parameter is always usually just consistent. It gives you the ID of the running process so you can use it and check the status. Okay, so now I'm here in my OIC instance. I've set up my EBS adapter. Um, and when I go into my integration, 
I will go ahead and add the BS adapter. So in the next screen, it will ask me for the product family, which is supply chain management. And then the product is inventory management. And in the interface, I can say concurrent programs, and you'll be able to see all the concurrent programs that are registered as REST interfaces. Well, some of these are not deployed. So let's say this one, if I click that, it'll give me an internal name. But if I click continue, it'll give me an error saying it's not deployed. You have to go and deploy it from the integration repository. Uh, but this one is what I have configured and deployed. So when I click on continue, it'll go take me to the next screen and show me the function that's within this, which is the process function. right? So this is how you can basically call any of the concurrent programs that are registered as REST interfaces within the integration repository. Now, the second piece to this is, let's say there is a concurrent program, like there's a lot, many concurrent programs which are not registered as REST interfaces. Now, how to register them is a whole separate video and discussion, uh, but let me just show you how you can use the generic run a concurrent program API to, to call any concurrent program that you have here in your EBS instance, right? Um, so in this case, I'm taking the active users report concurrent program. Um, the short name is this, and you know it's a part of the application object library. Now, if I go back to the integration repository and if I search, um, you'll see that it's not able to pull up um, anything because it does not exist. Now, if you go back to browse, I can go in here under the application technology, application object, library, um, and within this, you have two or three sections that start with the word concurrent. The one we're interested in is the concurrent request, and within the concurrent request, the FND underscore request. So when I click this, um, you'll be able to see all the procedures or functions within this, um, and within it, there is a submit request uh, API, which we can call, right? So number one, good REST services, deploy them. Um, in this case, I have deployed it. Once you deploy it, go to grants, um, you know, apply and create a grant for this. Um, in this case, I have the grant already for the user that I'm using in this demo. Um, but, um, you know, these ticks mean that, you know, the APIs are deployed. Uh, when we run it from OIC, it usually just calls the post API, and that's why um, we recommend deploying this as post instead of the get. Um, but you can use also use the get if you're doing it from any other application uh, or trying it from Postman, right? Um, so same thing here. If you click the view VATL, you'll be able to see um, all the APIs that are uh, available within this section. Uh, and if we want to see the input and output payloads for the submit request, we can take that URL um, and open the definition. Here you'll be able to see the input parameters um, and also the output parameters. Um, you can also see this if you go into the submit request, you'll be able to see all the options here, um, the name and all that, and all the required ones, right? So um, of course this one is required um, application program is required. Um, and then these arguments are just generic arguments. So based on whichever concurrent program you're calling, you'll have you know, one or many or more arguments which you can use. Uh, so in my case, I'm trying to call the active users program. And if I go under parameters, you'll see there aren't any. So I'm not worried about that. So to run this API from Postman, you go back to the WADL and here you will see all the parameters that are required, um, input parameters, um, and within that, there's application, program, and then all the arguments, right? So that's a similar structure that I've created with the same casing, casing matters. Um, so in their input parameters, I have application, program, and description. And um, usually with all of these REST APIs, all the post ones, um, and I think also get ones as well, um, you have to send uh, a REST header and within the REST header, um, all these fields uh, are required. And um, don't worry if you don't know this, you know, someone from the EBS admin team would probably know 
uh, which responsibility you need to invoke which API, right? So in this case, this is concurrent program under application object library, um, and the sysadmin has that um, permission to uh, invoke these APIs. So I'm just using that responsibility. Um, and if you mess up something here under the REST headers, you probably get an error like this, which will tell you that you know it's an invalid responsibility, so then you can basically change um, your uh, input. Um, going back to the EBS uh, page and coming here, and it'll also tell you the type of return, right? So if it re usually returns a request ID, uh, but zero if the submission fails, right? So let's come back to my postman, um, and let's say I correct this error, uh, but I'm doing something wrong with the application, right? And now if I do this, it'll return a zero, meaning that there's something wrong with some of any of these parameters, right? Because zero means it failed. Um, and now how to debug this is if you go back to EBS, uh, under your integration repository, you should see administration. And within administration, um, you should be seeing uh, logs, uh, log entries of these uh, invoke requests coming in. Um, if you don't, you know, you can go under configuration and under the configuration, you know, you add one, find the interface name uh, you do the service type as REST, um, and then the runtime as uh, procedure, uh, and apply. And with that, you'll be able to see entries for the APIs that you've just called. And here, if I see the last one, um, and I click the instance ID, uh, I can see the request message that was sent. This is what I sent, FND1. Um, and I can also see the response message uh, that you know I got back. And if I go back to the service monitor, uh, and if I see the earlier one, uh, this will tell me that there was a business fault, and then it tells me uh, the invalid responsibility key, because that's what I entered for the earlier call, the sysadmin one. Um, for this one, the status sent back was success, but the ID was zero. Uh, that's why the, the REST API call succeeded, uh, but the operation internally failed. Uh, so you have to look a little bit deeper into the logs to figure out what went wrong. Um, and again, these will you know, make more sense to your EBS admins, um, and they should be able to um, kind of go through this and let you know what uh, sort of error uh, you're getting and how to um, you know, rectify those. And then coming back to our Postman example, if I remove this and give all the correct parameters, if I hit send, I will get a request ID. And then I can go back to EBS, and if I click on requests and specific requests and search using that request ID, um, I'll see that um, it just ran and now it's complete. So that's how you run concurrent programs using the submit request API. Okay, now coming back to OIC, under the product family, in the product, I have the API concurrent request. I'm just checking the internal name. That's the one I want. If I click on continue, this will take me to the next screen, give me a list of functions within that wrapper, and I want the submit request one. So I click on continue, and I click finish. You'll see the REST header and the input parameters are created for you instead of you going through the battle. And that is the advantage of using the adapter. Um, but here, yeah, you would then just map all these, map the application, program, um, and then run it, and you should get something like this back, the request ID. Now we've seen how to run the concurrent request, so then you also need to check the status of it, and that's where the request set uh, FND concurrent comes into the play. So if you click that, you will see there are two APIs, uh, get request status and wait for request. And again, under the REST Web Services, I've already deployed these um, and already given grants, but you just have to do those in case uh, you want to. And then when you go back to Postman, I have another example here with the similar structure, right? I have input parameters, REST header, um, and the request ID and all that, of course, I got uh, from here. If I click into it, it'll tell me what goes in, right? So request ID, short name, program, 
um, and this comes out the phase status. Okay, uh, and then I come here and paste it and then I hit send and then you'll see it gives me the response uh, telling me it's completed. And in case of errors, you would see something like this. So the phase would always be completed, but the status will tell you if it's an error or not. To replicate this in OIC, you can create an integration that first calls the concurrent program, then um, checks in a loop to see if the phase is equal to complete or not, and waits for, of course, a certain interval because the concurrent programs can take some time. You can kind of run it and see the interval and then adjust it accordingly. In this case, I just have it for five seconds because this one particularly runs really quick. Um, and then, you know, you send out a notification with the request ID and the status, right? So let me just run this. And it completed successfully. You can see the concurrent program was executed. We waited, we checked the status and send out a notification. And this is what the notification looks like with the request ID uh, completed and then the status is normal. Okay, thank you for watching. Hope this was helpful.